discuss these seven topics. So the first topic is a good beginning. We all know that the Kaveri water stretches over Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Kerala and Puducherry. So as of now we are having this Kaveri water management authority but what is the use of this Kaveri water management authority or why do we have it? So we already have Kaveri river water dispute tribunal which is there to solve the conflicts which are arising between all these four states. But what is the tribunal does is it awards or it gives a solution uh, between the uh, river water conflicts between all these states but to effectively implement whatever the award given by this Kaveri river water dispute we are having this Kaveri river water management authority. So also uh, recently in 16th February 2018 uh, the Supreme Court passed a verdict which says that the, there is some change in the level of water to be supplied to each and every state. So if you see this diagram uh, in this side so it is the recent split of amount of water to be given to each state. So uh, last year in 2007 the amount of water to be awarded to Tamil Nadu was like 419 but recently it was reduced to like 404 but for Karnataka it is like uh, increasing the amount of water from 270 to 285 so on what basis they are doing these changes is like for Tamil Nadu it is on the basis of the groundwater level implication but for in case of Karnataka uh, they are uh, looking or they are increasing this amount of water on the basis of the drinking water necessity that the Karnataka needs so this is the Supreme Court's verdict on uh, recent days so first one is the Kaveri Water Management Authority asked Karnataka to release this much amount of water to Tamil Nadu as against the earlier a lot amount of water. So it reduces the amount of water needs to be released to Tamil Nadu from Karnataka. So this new water sharing scheme would be applicable for next 15 years. This is what the verdict says. So the court also directed the central government to constitute Kaveri Water Management Board within six weeks to supervise this implementation of the award by the Kaveri Water Management Authority. So uh, the next slide is the Kaveri Water Management Authority and its composition. So this authority has like one chairman and the eight members. So this chairman is appointed by the center and the tenure is like five years or 65 years whichever is earlier. So the qualification is the chairman should be an IAS officer or a senior eminent engineer with wide experience in this regard. Uh, we are having eight members, four from the center and four from the state and four from the center is also two full-time members and two part-time members. And Kaveri Water Management Authority, what it will do? So if you see these are the functions of the Kaveri Water Management Authority like it would uh, monitor the storage, appointment, regulation and control of the Kaveri waters over all the four states and this will also uh, involve the determination of total residual storage in various reservoirs every year. So it also assesses the trend of inflows and outflows of the water so as to authorize a withdrawal of water to the state. So it also suggests some micro irrigation techniques or it also suggests some crop irrigation patterns so that the water could be used efficiently all over the state. So it also prepares an annual report and assists CWRC which is the Kaveri Water Regulation Committee. So this Kaveri Water Regulation Committee is under this Kaveri Water Management Authority. So this Kaveri Water Management Authority has had its first meeting. So in that first meeting on only they are told like Karnataka to release this much amount of water to Tamil Nadu in July. So this quantum of water is based on the monthly schedule and it excludes the surplus realized by Tamil Nadu in June. So this CWRC Kaveri Water Regulation Committee is expected to meet once in every 10 days during the monsoon months so that it could uh, measure the uh, amount of uh, inflows and outflows uh, in the Kaveri Water River Basin and it decides how much amount of water should be given to each and every state. And it, so in implementing whatever the Kaveri Water Management Board says, there is some challenges we have to face. So the first one is the cooperation of the state. The second one is in a distress year what it should do. So cooperation among the states means so if you want to split the water among the states, you should first get the data about this inflows, outflows, rainfall, cropping patterns and periodic withdrawals from the reservoirs of all the states. But to collect the data from all these states only requires the cooperation among the states. So during normal years there is no problem in splitting of the water among the states but during the distress year there is a shortfall of water obviously so there is a challenge again. So why Karnataka challenges? Karnataka is planning to challenge in the Supreme Court the center's notification constituting the authority. So it is what Karnataka says actually is like first the parliament has to debate and then put to vote and then have to decide on this. So then only the Kaveri Water Management Board comes into play. So that is what the Karnataka says. However, the Supreme Court approved this draft stating that 
uh, it whatever the regulations or whatever it is in the draft is in consonance with the dictum and the directions of the award by the court and it is also in conformity with the section 6a of the 1956 act and is it helpful so for tamil nadu what we need is timely release of water for karnataka what they need is drinking water needs of bengaluru to be considered first so it should be more like a cooperation mechanism between the states or among the states if any state didn't cooperate with the kaveri tribunal so it is like a resolution mechanism which is put forward if any state didn't cooperate with the Kaveri tribunals award then the authority can directly approach the center on whose decision is final and binding so what they state is the center's decision is final and binding in this case so what is the way forward so to strengthen the cooperation among the states apart from this CWMA the Kaveri family which was before now it again need to be resumed so that the Kaveri family constitute this farmers, the agriculturists, the economists, all those peoples of all the states can again come together and discuss about the, the sharing of the water among all the states. So the Kaveri family is more uh, like cooperation mechanism rather than the litigation mechanism. If we see, the Kaveri is the source of livelihood and the effective management and not the litigation is the way. So the second article is bilateral limits of hype. So what is the background of this news is the postponement of 2 plus 2 dialogue has, has raised the questions over the quality of relationship between India and the US. So what this 2 plus 2 dialogue means? So 2 plus 2 dialogue means the defense minister and the foreign minister of both the countries would sit together to talk about the bilateral relationship between the countries. So this was supposed to be planned this week but it is now getting postponed. So on based of this information, they are raising some concerns uh, over the bilateral relationship between India and US. So President Trump is also looking forward to big summits like North Korea and with Russia rather than with India. So this also again raises a concern. So President Trump's decision are mainly focused on keeping his political base constantly on the boil. So President Trump's recent action indicated his discontent over the legacy of the past presidents of the US. So like India, in US also they are always blaming their, uh, uh, their predecessors or the legacy leaders. President Trump's or US strike on China and Pakistan also left an image that we are going together like India and US are going together because obviously the US is now strike on China and Pakistan. China today threatens the dominance of US. But the America is mostly obsessed with Russia rather than China. So India's position has also now becoming more tricky with the US because of the enactment of Katsa, which is countering America's adversaries through Sanctions Act. So now US is trying to put sanctions on three countries, which is North Korea, Iran and Russia, which is going to affect the relationship between India and, and Russia or India and Iran in the future. So President Trump and his administrator consider India and China as a violators of intellectual property laws which means the US is now putting India and China in the same basket like we, they are treating India and China as a violators of IPR laws and as the countries that put barriers to trade or the countries which subsidize the exports and these two countries use their state power to control the markets. What is the strategic importance of India? So we all know that Asia Pacific, in Asia Pacific there is no India, so US try to include India into the Asia Pacific so that it could named as Indo-Pacific region. And second one is India's arms import from the US. So these two factors majorly uh, determine the lenience or uh, lenience of US towards India. So the General Motors and the Ford also has come out against a trade war with China. So this has implications for India. We are having American companies in India. So as Mr. Trump is putting India and China as a sa in the same basket, so it is again this dynamic uh, creates an environment, a conducive environment for the uh, summit, which is the Wuhan summit, which is an informal summit between India and China. Withdrawal from Iran deal also measure the gut or to blame predecessor legacy. So recently US withdraw from the Iran deal. So it is also by means of blaming the predecessor, Trump is now withdraw from this Iran deal. So in the coming months, a series of significant defense purchases and agreements could be concluded between India and US. So, but India-US relationship will be better off without these hype or grand theories of encouraged by the government. Without these hype and grand theories at all, this India and US relationship will be better off. Otherwise, every rescheduling like this postponement of 2 plus 2 meeting, every rescheduling of a meeting will be interpreted as a collapse of the ties between any two countries. Avoiding the exaggeration could help manage the India's trouble with Pakistan and China better. So, this trouble like hyper-nationalism in foreign policy is also causing 
causing the short sightedness among the countries. So the adversity of hype has its own limit. So the third article is appointment of DGPs. So if you see the background, in 1996, DGP Prakash Singh uh, filed a petition against the method or procedures followed for the appointment of the DGPs by the state government. So after 10 years, the Supreme Court passed a verdict which has seven directives. Now on making use of those uh, directives, the state government has started abusing the procedure in which the DGPs are appointed. One of the directive is like once if the officer is selected for the job, he or she should have a minimum tenure of at least two years irrespective of their date of superannuation so the state government is using this as an advantage in the appointment of the DGPs so to stop this abuse Supreme Court also ruled out the legality of acting DGPs so the court also directed the state to ensure that the DGP should be appointed through a merit-based transparent process and secure a minimum tenure of two years without the abusement of these directives. So what is this Prakashing versus Union of India case? So in 1996, a petition was filed before the Supreme Court by DGP Prakashing that raised various instances of abuses of the power by the police and alleged that the police personnel performed their duties in a politically uh, partition manner. So the Supreme Court issued its judgment in 2006 after 10 years ordering that the centre and the states to set up the authorities to evaluate the uh, functions or the performance on what basis the state government is appointing this DGP. So the court also required the minimum tenure of service to be guaranteed to key police officers to protect them from the arbitrary transfers and postings. So what the recent modification in this case is, so now the Supreme Court has asked the states to consult the UPSC before appointing the new direction given by the Supreme Court for the appointment of DGP. So if you see in this slide, so these are the state subjects on which the state could make laws and these are the center subjects on which the center could make laws and these are the, the criminal law and the criminal procedures or like the concurrent one. So both the states and the center can make laws. The next article is acute drought in Cape Town. So a uh, water crisis is observed all over the world. If you see here, day zero, which literally means death day, which means there is no enough availability of water for a country. So it was already observed in Cape Town, South Africa. So the main reason for this day zero, which was observed in South Africa is due to the drought of three years due to El Nino. So uh, the residents have been living with the stringent consumption restrictions, which now stands like 50 liters per person per day. So there might be a possibility that again this uh, day zero could be observed in the uh, South Africa in the near future. So why it is in news? So it is like a solution to the day zero which was observed in South Africa. So a plan to tow an iceberg from Antarctica to Cape Town of South Africa to supply the fresh water. So how to transfer that iceberg from Antarctica to Cape Town is like wrapping that iceberg in an insulation skirt via a super tanker. So this cost approximately like 100 million dollar and the processing of that iceberg to get this fresh water is estimated to be like 50 to 60 million dollar. So what are the concerns in uh, making this plan to be successful? So how the water will be channeled into the city's distribution system even though the iceberg are getting transferred from the Antarctica to the Cape Town. So how this uh, water which we get from these icebergs are to be channeled into city's distribution system that is one of the major concern. And second one is there is no guarantee to produce promised volume of water even though we could brought a large uh, a huge amount of iceberg it is not pr uh, promisable or it is not sure or guaranteed that we could get the promised volume of water which could be enough for the South Africa takeaways for India so scientists predicted that the day zero might be observed in the near future in Bengaluru also so scientists predicted this situation in Indra Sagar Narmatha River and in Bangalore so the next article is thinking skin concept so why it is in news an Indian origin scientist received 1.5 million pounds as funding from EPSRC which is Engineering and Physical Research Council. So uh, why he uh, received this much fund is to create a robotic hand which covered in a briny skin that mimics the human sense of touch. So what is a briny skin? It reacts like a normal human skin. So it has its own neurons that respond immediately to the touch. Rather than having to relay the whole message to the brain, the briny skin first senses the touch and then only it processes and sends it to the brain in a very faster way. So uh, we could make use of this briny skin uh, in humanoids and in prosthetic limbs and all. This briny skin is made of silicon based printed neural transistors and graphenes which is an allotrope of carbon which is very stronger than steel.
So the next article is Cola Bear Genome Decoded. So what the Cola Bear is a native tree dwelling Australian marsupial. It is considered as a powerful international symbol for the preservation and conservation of our natural world. So where it is uh, the geography of this Cola Bear is if you look means this eastern part of Australia has a wide uh, presence of this Cola Bear. So what is the food of Cola Bear? So it is like the eucalyptus tree leaves. So their unique and highly specific diet of eucalyptus tree leaves makes it very distinct. Like because this eucalyptus is very toxic for other mammals but it is uh, consumed by this cola beer. So why because the cola beer have like this 450 gene in cola. It, it only helped in detoxification of those eucalyptus which is uh, toxic to other mammals. So, uh, what is the news is like the gene of this cola beer is first decoded this time very recently. So, IUCN status of cola beer is vulnerable. The last article is the Tanjavur painting. So uh, the Tanjavur painting was developed by uh, Maratha Empire during the late 18th and 19th centuries. So the characterization of this Tanjavur painting is basically by means of bold drawing and the techniques of shading by making use of pure and brilliant colors. Images of Vishnu, Shiva and Krishna are the favorite of the Tanjavur painting artists. So they made uh, these Tanjavur paintings for ritual and worship rather than for display purposes. So these paintings are made by means of unbleached cloth which is pasted against a jack wood uh, with uh, jewelries and stones pasted on it and remarkable gold leaf work to which a mixture of chalk, gum, honey are applied. So the background of these Tanjavur paintings is basically mostly painted in red and green.